hello guys welcome back in this video we are going to learn how to build a multiple choice questions in python now all that we are doing here is we just run our code in the interpreter and then the command line but after we have learned enough we will use some frameworks and some python tools to build graphical user interfaces all right that is we can deploy such programs like this to the web and standalone softwares okay so for now this is the program that we want to build so at the end of this video you should be able to build this on your own so the first question is who developed the python programming language then we type our answer the instruction says select from the letter a to d the option that best satisfy a question you can either type a small letter or a capital letter either way you are good to go so we choose let's say a then another question pops up we choose d another question pops up we choose let's say a another question pops up we choose a and then a then we have here wrong answer the correct answer is c that is for question one question two we had it correct and so on we scored 60 so that is basically what we want to do in this video so let's jump right in so we have the questions already defined for us as a list of dictionaries question and options to be displayed so this is a list of dictionary popularly known in javascript as json all right so here we want to just print a question and then print the options and then we have the correct answer here so we are the option of the user what the user you choose as a member of this dictionary so that we can compare it to the correct answer so first we have to print the instruction that is select from the letter a to d the option that best satisfy a question okay so this is our prompt or instruction then after that we have to bring some space between the instruction and then the questions then once we are done with this instruction we have to initialize a certain variable called score that is to keep the score of the user and then after that we can use for loop to print the questions okay so this is a list we have to enter this list using for loop like this for we can use any variable as we said so we can say question not questions okay question in questions so now we are in this list after we get into this list what can we do again all the items are dictionaries and dictionaries consist of what key value pairs so what can we do we can assess the question that we want to print that is a question test like this and then we print question test so all that we are doing in this loop is we want to assess this questions list then once we are in we print the questions okay so if you run this code right now you see that only the questions will be printed for each line without the options okay for each line the questions will be printed we have question one who developed the python programming language without the options so if you want to print the questions too then we have to use nested loop for option this is also a variable you can use anything in question all right we have already assessed the items in this list so all that we can do also is that we assess the options here and then we print option at first it might look confusing to you but just calm down once we are done with this just try and go through yourself and then you see everything will be simplified for you so once we print each question and then its options we want a space all right before the user enter 
is our uh, answer so we can do that by bringing a space here make sure you don't add it to this second follow this nested follow otherwise it's going to print or insert an empty space after each option all right then after that what can we do we have to accept the user input okay we can do that with user choice or user input equals input then we ask the user to enter your answer that is what we have done there right then after the user has entered his answer we need to add the answer to this dictionary okay so we have to bring here question then we create a key for this user input so we just want it to be the same thing user input this is just a key all right and then we actually put the user input here okay so once we are done with the user input too if we check here we inserted another space this is just for aesthetic reasons just to make our code clearer all right our output clear so we bring another space here then after that we just have to check whether what the user entered is correct okay so we have to define another for loop we use inverse comma this inverse that we are using here is just to get our questions numbered our answers numbered like this all right mm -hmm. just to keep track of our answer what we entered if it's correct or wrong and then use question again in enumerate so that is how we can get the index of each line all right of each question and then we put questions here we have used enumerate we explained it in the previous video so if you have forgotten about it just refresh your mind in the previous videos and then we have to check if user or if what the user entered is equal to the correct answer so if user input because you have already added this to the dictionary okay equals question of the correct answer that we have predefined in the dictionary so we are comparing if the answer is equal if the answer is correct then we should update the score using augmented assignment operator we have done this if you remember so if the answer is correct then we want to just print to the user here like what we have done here correct answer okay if it's not then we say wrong answer then we tell the user what the correct answer is so that is all that we are doing here we use f spring then here we bring our index here you see here you can see that here our index starts from one two up to five but we have how many items here how many dictionaries here five right so the index is supposed to end at four but since we don't want to start from zero and end at four we will just add one to the zero and then it will keep updating this is a for loop right so anytime it enters the loop it will just add one to the index okay so that we will start from one instead of zero so if the answers are equal we want to print the isa that correct answer else we print to the isa that wrong answer right index plus one wrong answer the correct answer is then we tell the user the correct answer what is the correct answer the question correct answer right we need to assess this answer so correct since you have used double quotes to define the f formatting the f string if you try to use double quotes here it won't work so you have to use single quotes all right correct answer simple as that all right so once we do that then we just bring a space here to tell the user what he or she scored okay so we just bring a space here an empty space empty line then 
we just want to define another variable to keep the score you tell the user that you scored let's say two over five three over five or so ever that the user will score so score out of length of questions we are actually going to use this to calculate the percentage so here we print to the user use another f string you scored then we print the score here score right out of so we bring the division symbol here and then we define another place so that len of questions all right then we bring full stop here that is we just defining the last line you score this that is then we calculate the percentage okay so the percentage will be results times 100 we are done so let's run this code and see if everything goes on well then we are good to go so if you run this okay who developed the python programming language we have a rick van rosum rasmus Ledov, gildo gildo van rosum neither stone is gildo van rosum that developed the python programming language all right so the correct answer is c then we have the number two which type of programming language does python support object oriented programming you will read this soon structured programming python is structured functional programming you will read this soon and show that python is also functional okay so functions you are going to build our own functions d all of the above so the correct answer is d and then which of the following is the correct extension of a python file we know that is dot pi we can see it here right so the correct answer is b and then we have what will be the value of the following python expression 4 plus 3 modulo 5 we know that the operator precedence of modulo is higher than the addition symbol so you first evaluate 3 modulo 5 which is 3 because 3 divided by 5 the reminder will be oh, still 3 because 3 divided by 5 3 5 can go into 3 so the reminder will still be 3 and then 3 plus 4 is 7 so the answer is a you put that here then which of the following is used to define a block of code in python if you can see when you are defining the for loop and then the if else statement or the if statement use what indentation as i said so the correct answer is indentation not brackets or whatsoever so you are having all correct 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 you scored five over five that is hundred but we wanted hundred percent right so let's add that and then so we can bring our percent here and then let's run this code again here we said c the answer is c right but let me bring space and then enter c and let's see if you will get it correct and here the correct answer is d right so let me enter capital d, d rather and then let's see and then the rest let's choose the correct thing here a and then we said a again we are getting wrong answer for number one and two even though the correct answer is c right we enter c but we brought space and then this one the correct answer is d we entered capital d but the interpreter was expecting small d so how can we fix this all right we entered space with c and then capital d so we can go back to our code and then here the user input before we add this value to the dictionary we can convert anything that the user will enter to lower case all right so if the person enter upper case we convert it to lower case all right it's a method so we have to bring this and then after that we have to you we can use the strip method to strip all white spaces and new line characters all right we have done this in list methods or string methods if you remember so when you run this again and then we bring space c and then this one we hit capital d or uppercase d enter b a a see we are getting 100 percent 
now our code works perfectly so always make sure you strip off the white spaces i quite remember during the undergraduate studies we had some online exams and most of the students were complaining they type if the answer is true they will type in true with small t but probably they coded the multi-choice question to be capital t and they mark us some of the students down and it was quite unfortunate those who developed the module was very 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 weak they didn't develop it well so if you cater for all these things then it will catch all you have to convert the user input to match the correct answer whether it's uppercase or lowercase okay so go through again try and then use different approach it's not by force for your code to look like what we have done here use different approach and see if you can solve it on your own bye bye for now in the next video we will look at the while loop